this morning before we get started. Remind you, Sunday school is in, has started last week. The adults, we will start this week. So come back in here after you get your coffee out there, and we'll get started at 1045, or as close to that as we can. Also, you have something in your in your liturgies there, your or bulletins, whichever one you want to call it. Talked about e-giving. We have new opportunities for you to take care of that. Instead of having to write a check every month, like I do, I'm just old school and can't help it, you know. Makes me feel good when I'm writing that thing out. I know it shouldn't, but it does. Is there anything else this morning before we begin? All right, 
Well, we keep Helen and Dave Gustafson in our prayers as they travel to see family who are all sick. So we miss them this morning. We thank you, Martha, for doing Helen's job. And Ed and Peter for doing Dave's job. So good job. We'll double their pay. I'm sorry? We'll double their pay. We'll double their pay, exactly, yes. Bill. Yes. Yes, that's, been, that's being handled by Christian Concerns still. But there's some, there's somebody who's on that, yes. Mm-hmm. But that has not ended, just because she's there. Uh, 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 Bill? Bill? <laughs> Mr. Davidson, they say you're, it sounds like you're volunteering. <laughs> I just wanted to relay the message. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Tim, can you bring me down just a little bit? I'm feeding back a little bit here. Thank you, sir. Perfect. All right. If we have nothing else, let us rise as we begin this morning. We gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Your sins are forgiven, then, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We open one of my favorites as we gather at your table. Thank you. 
us pray. Living God in Christ, you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 5th verse. These verses compose a poem that is part of a larger collection of wisdom sayings that contrasts two ways of life. Life with God brings blessings. The power and the vitality of God is active in our life. Life without God brings a curse, the power of death. And now the reading. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by the water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, it and its leaves shall always stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doing, the word of the Lord. Please read with me Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the ways of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scorn. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. For Paul, the resurrection of Christ is the basis for Christian hope. Because Christ has been raised, those who are in Christ know that they too will be raised to a new life beyond death. And now the reading. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection? Of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our pro proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testify of God that he is, that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of people most to be pitied. But... In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Luke, the sixth chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with the great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. All in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In case you may be seated, I invite the children forward for the children's message. Come on down, guys. This morning. Doing okay? Yeah? Excellent. I'm so glad. Is it a little cold in here? A little bit. But that's for our own safety. We need fresh air to protect ourselves from this virus that we can't seem to beat. Well, we wear masks, right? To protect ourselves. So we keep all the doors and windows open. It gets a little chilly, but we run yet heat. And we carry blankets and wear, wear our coats and stuff like that, right? Indeed. So in some sense, yes, yes, Ellen? Uh, well, there's screens on the, on the windows. Now, if they're, if, they're, if they're accurate enough, they can get in through the doors. And if they're accurate enough to get in through the doors, then let's let them have a good time. They're part of God's creation, right? So this whole virus thing has woes to it, right? We don't like wearing masks, do we? I don't enjoy it. We don't enjoy having to wear a coat inside church, do we? No, I don't. Well, for me, guys, it's great because I stay a little cooler this way, you know, because I have so much on. But there's also blessings to it as well, aren't there? You know, the masks keep us safe. Vaccinations keep us safe. <coughs> yes, 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 ma'am. Did you? I did too. I'm glad. Because all that means is it's kind of like the flu nowadays. It's getting to that point, you know, where it's just going to be like the flu, where we just have to deal with it and get our vaccinations. We might catch it, but we won't end up in the hospital or dead like a whole lot of people have. So there's woes and there's blessings in this situation. The vaccination is a blessing. Masks are a blessing and a woe. So Jesus talks about blessings and woes this morning as well. In our lives... And Jesus, what Jesus is talking about is our lives are filled with both. You know, some of the blessings that we have, y'all have good parents, those, that's a blessing, right? You have sisters and brothers, that's a blessing, right? Yeah. I know, and she's beautiful, just like you. And Eleanor and, and William here obviously get along fine because you know they're just sitting there with each other and that's all good stuff that's a blessing right moms and dads are blessings having food on the table is blessing right sometimes we have a bad day and that can be a woe and maybe we cry because something's made us sad but that's okay it passes right and what we know in the midst of all these blessings and all these woes is that jesus is right here with us no matter where we go no matter what we do Jesus is with us. <clears throat> and 
that's the true blessing. Yes, he is. Absolutely, positively. He's in your heart. Right here. He gives himself to be with us. <coughs> and that's important to know that you're never really alone. <coughs> you always have Jesus with you. So keep that in mind as you go through this week. Have a good week. Be careful out there. Always keep your mask on. And have a good day. Thank you, guys. I think I'll stand by this window. Y'all excuse me at Janet's command. I must take this off to preach. And I listen to everything Janet tells me to do, you know, so. <clears throat> Our gospel lesson this morning is Luke's version of what we know as the Beatitudes. <clears throat> now, I don't know about y'all, but I really prefer Matthew's version of the Beatitudes over Luke's version of the Beatitudes, because Matthew's are a little more spiritual in nature and, and not quite so harsh. Luke, on the other hand, he had, Matthew has eight blessings, Luke has four blessings, and then adds four woes to them. And as we listen to Luke's Beatitudes, it might be a little hard for us to find ourselves in those Beatitudes. It might be a little hard, but I think I can help us this morning as we study this and think about this. Jesus, um, first of all, has come down off the mountain after he's selected his disciples and he's curing everybody. He's healing everybody of all of their, their diseases. He's casting out demons. He's feeding people. He's doing, showing what it means to be a, a member of the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, people are healed. In the kingdom of God, people don't go hungry. In the kingdom of God, demons and Satan are defeated. They don't have a place. And so Jesus sits down, and I want you to notice who he's talking to here. He's not talking to the great crowd that's around him. It says he speaks to his disciples. To his disciples, to the twelve. Now those folks standing around and all crowded around certainly heard everything Jesus said. But it's clear, Luke makes it clear, Jesus is addressing his disciples. He is teaching his disciples what it means and what this world is about and what they are to be about begins by saying, blessed are the poor, blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Wow. Yours is the kingdom of God just because you're poor. Blessed are the hungry because you will be filled. You won't be hungry anymore. Blessed are those who weep, for you will laugh. And blessed are you because of my name. Rejoice in that day. Be glad because your reward is great in heaven. Jesus kind of makes it clear that our reward is not coming necessarily today in this place, but is ongoing and ultimately will come to fruition. And we know it will come to fruition in the resurrection. So what Jesus is describing here is the kingdom. This is the kingdom of God. This is what it looks like. You know, the poor are taken care of. Those who are, who are sick are healed. Those who are hungry are filled. Those who um, weep are comforted. And those who follow him, even though we take a little bit of heat for it on occasion, maybe less so even today, folks. Although it's, it's getting to be a little more. We need to rejoice in that day. But then St. Luke describes the world. He says, woe to the rich, because you've got yours. Listen to that. You've got everything you're going to get. And whenever I, the people I have known who are really, truly, overly rich in this world, who I've known in, in, over the years, that's really all they want. I watched a, a, um, an interview. This has been five or six years ago now on, on uh, 60 Minutes. And I think it was Leslie Stahl who was um, interviewing this young man. He was in his 30s. He was a billionaire. And the last question she asked him was, what are you most afraid of? And he said, losing my money. That speaks volumes, folks. That speaks volumes. He had all he wanted and all he needed. He just didn't want to lose it. 
Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and you will weep. And well to you, woe to you who are well spoken of, because that's what they did about the false prophets in the days of yore. Whenever people are speaking well of you, you need to be worried about it. You need to be worried about it according to Jesus. What Jesus is doing here is comparing and contrasting the kingdom of God with the world in which we live. We know what the world looks like in this world. I mean, we, we know. And I'm going to try to keep this a little shorter than last week, folks, because we would have went over last week, but I still have plenty of notes here. But <clears throat> if you... If you look at what's going on in this world, if you look at the statistics, just in the United States, I don't want to talk about the whole world because it's just overwhelming, but here in the United States, folks, almost 20% of the population are what they call food insecure. It's about 37 million people, and of those 37 million people, it's about 12 million children involved in that as well in this country. That's a sad statement. 2020. In 2020, 37 million people live below the poverty line as, the, as established by the United States government. That's $11,400 a year. You can't live on 11 4 You can't. You can't pay rent on 11 4 <clears throat> Before COVID started in 2019, the American Psychiatric Association said that about 20% of the United States population lived in some sort of depressive mode or other mental illness. Wow, that's scary. Since this COVID has begun, 917,000 people have died along with the normal death rate in this country. Can you imagine the amount of weeping and wailing and mourning that has been going on in this country? This is life as we know it today. This is what Jesus is describing to us in these woes. This is reality for us in this country. And on occasion, folks, on occasion, if you do truly call Jesus and you say no or you stand up and you speak the truth in the situation where the truth needs to be spoken and you do it because that's what Jesus calls you to do, you're just likely to be told, shut up, sit down. Because Jesus really doesn't have much of a say in things in this country anymore. Pay attention. One of the things I want you to notice about this, the Beatitudes is that Jesus never says in those Beatitudes, I came to fix all this. He didn't say that. He didn't come down here to make all of poverty disappear. He didn't come down here to cure everybody in the world. He didn't come down here to make everybody hum not be hungry anymore. But what he did do is in his place, in his moment, he did what he could do for the people that were there. Jesus never said, I came down here to snatch you out of this reality into heaven. That's called rapture theology, and it's not in the Bible, but it sure does sound good sometimes, but it's not true. Jesus didn't come to save us from this business that we call life here in this place. Jesus came to rescue us from ourselves, rescue us from death, to give us eternal life, but also to call us into his kingdom and to make us workers, co-workers with him, in this place that we call life that is so difficult and so hard. It slaps us upside the head sometimes and leaves us feeling absolutely positively helpless at times whenever we see folks who we can't do anything for and guilty whenever we don't do that what we can do for those folks who we can help. This world is hard. Jesus, instead of coming to snatch us out of this hard world, comes to be with us in the midst of it, and to walk with us in the midst of it, and to get down in the dirt, and to lament with us whenever we lament over it, to walk as we walk, to be as we are, but also to call us to be as he is. Probably the most exemplary example I can give you of someone who walks in the kingdom is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. You've all heard of her, correct? Mother Teresa of Calcutta ministered to those folks who nobody else would touch in India. And she truly believed that she was touching the Christ himself 
as she ministered to them. She took Matthew 25 seriously where Jesus says, whatever you do, the least of these, you have done for me. She is an excellent example. That's why she's been made a saint by the Catholic Church. She's somebody we can look at and say, you know what, she understands what Jesus meant. She helps us to see our lives, how they ought to be. Because we are called to be kingdom dwellers. We are children of God by virtue of our baptism into Christ. We have been given his presence in our lives to be with us no matter what happens. He will be with us even as we enter into the darkness of death. He will show us out of the light of the resurrection. So we don't have to worry about death anymore. If we don't have to worry about death, what do we have to fear? What do we have to fear? In this Eucharist today, our Lord is going to give himself to us one more time to remind us of our place, to build us up for this work that we have been given. And then he's going to send us back out into the world. And I am always amazed at this one little part, the end of the sending liturgy. It goes something like this, go in peace, serve the Lord. And we all say loudly, thanks be to God. I'm a little bit confused about that because, folks, that's the hardest thing I know in the world to do, and yet we say thank you for letting us do it. And I think it's simply because it's an honor to serve our Lord in the world because we know what he does for us and what he has done for us and what he's going to do for us. So my sisters and brothers, do not lose hope in the midst of the face of the darkness of this world. Walk with Jesus into it. And do what we can when we're out there. And come back here next Sunday and let's get filled back up and ready for the next six days of work in God's kingdom. Thanks be to God. Strangely enough. Amen. Amen.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing into the world. God of grace. Amen. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer. God of grace. Amen. Renew this congregation in our shared mission as we plan and dream for the future you are preparing Inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace. Amen. Healing God, hear the prayers of your people as we lift them up to you by name, out loud or in our hearts. We pray for all who are on our prayer list. Visit them with your healing spirit. We pray for the faculty, staff, and students of Kennesaw State University as they continue their mission of education. And we pray for our sister congregation, Mount Zion AME Church. Bless and preserve them. God of grace. We pray for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth and our Bishop Kevin. Give them the wisdom and clarity of vision they need as they lead our church in these troubling times. God of grace. God of justice, the racial profiling of people of color and innocent victims of racist attacks continues to plague this nation. We are committed to condemning white supremacy and racism, making our actions, make our actions as strong as our words. 
We pray for students and staff at multiple historically black colleges and universities, including those in Atlanta, that have been targeted recently by bomb threats. Let them feel safe and protected, and let justice be done. Lead us to advocate and be a voice for those whose voices have been taken from them. Bring comfort, peace, and hope as we continue to struggle for justice for all of your children. God of grace. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. We share that peace with those who are next to us.
And so with this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may be your Son's body and blood. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. With all your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, most blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. And now we're bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. Thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of 
Thank you.
now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace to eternal life. Amen. For we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you His peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.